Hello again, continuing the series on combative mindset. And I think it might be interesting to uh, talk a little bit about how I first got interested in the subject and um, how I started um, researching it. Um, many, many years ago, it would have been in probably 1970 or something like that, uh, I was walking through Liverpool city centre one Saturday with Terry, Terry O'Neill, and we'd been working together the night before uh, in the Victoria Honour Club. And uh, it just occurred to me, and I said to Terry, you know, how do you remember all the guys that you've uh, thrown out of the club or you've had, you've had um, violent encounters with, you know, which was a tremendous number uh, from his career. And, uh, you know, we can bump into them at any time. How would you recognise them? And he said, it's impossible, you can't. He said, what you've got to be, you've just got to be on your guard all the time and, um, you know, pay attention to what's going on around you. And that was the very first um, inkling of the, that idea. And a, a term which encompasses that, uh, I later read in an article in Fighting Arts magazine, uh, a, a martial arts uh, instructor whose background had been a fighter pilot, and he used the term situational awareness. And uh, it made sense and it tied in. It, it, it described that sense of observation, of using all your senses, etc., um, and then obviously um, in the later 70s, about 1978, uh, I trained with Colonel Cooper and he did his uh, famous mindset lecture and uh, gave us the colour code, which is a, also a practical way of using the mindset. So um, th that's kind of the background to it. That situational awareness is, is a great term. Um, and as I say, it came from this chap who'd been a fighter pilot, and it's uh, a common professional term with, with, with them, which brings us on to the books that I'm going to talk about today, because they concern uh, Colonel John Boyd, who was a fighter pilot and a fighter pilot instructor. And he became known as 42nd Boyd, because when he was an instructor at Nellis Air Force Base, he issued a challenge to anyone. He would go up in his F-100 uh, Sabre and um, allow his opponent to get on his six o'clock on his tail. And then he would reverse the position within 40 seconds. And he offered this as a challenge to any, anyone. And fighter pilots are, are, are not known for their reticence in accepting a challenge and uh, being confident. And the, the guys who came through Nellis, and some of them were from other services, such as the U.S. Marines, um, eagerly accepted the challenge, and no one ever um, uh, managed to um, defeat him. And there were some who lasted only 10 seconds. And he had this um, energy and maneuver, maneuverability theory, which he um, put into practice. So... The life of, of Boyd uh, was very, very interesting. He studied warfare and he um, uh, expanded it out from just the aerial combat into uh, land warfare and, and then into the, the whole field of strategy. And the, the books that uh, I, I want to talk about to discuss this, first of all, is The Mind of War by Grant T. Hammond. John Boyd in American Security. This really is a biography of John Boyd. It talks about his time at Nellis, 42nd Boyd and so on. And he talks about uh, the OODA loop, which, which is famous uh, for anyone who has heard of Boyd, heard of the OODA loop. And uh, in, in the book, it's a very, very complex um, diagram uh, because it brings in lots and lots of different elements now for us the OODA loop was introduced into the tactical community by Marcus Wynn and uh, I remember when he did and I've still got the notes that he uh, had when he was 
training in the air marshals gave me a copy of his um, lesson plan for this and he, he referenced um, um, Boyd's influence on uh, people in land warfare and so on and uh, he, he uh, Marcus introduced the, the elegant um, model which is uh, observation, orientation, decision, action just that in a loop and then went on to explain how you use it and uh, getting inside the OODA loop and things like that. So that's the importance to what we do in um, close quarter combat, whether it's armed or unarmed. Uh, another book is Certain to Win by Chet Richards. And this is more an analysis of uh, Colonel Boot Boyd's uh, lessons and strategies, both from the warfare point of view and to um, business and so on. So he's got many, many diagrams in it and uh, lots and lots of analysis, uh, comparison of the simple OODA loop and the complex OODA loop, things like that. Uh, things like uh, fingerspits and gefühl, which means intuitive skill which is something that Boyd identified in warfare. He, he, he looked at Blitzkrieg, he, he looked at uh, von Clausewitz and things like this, and um, put all this material together. Now for us in the uh, tactical community as such, uh, I still think there's um, tremendous relevance in the simple OODA loop. Uh, I've taught it, um, I've had good feedback about it, it's, it's elegant, it, f it fits not alongside the colour code, but um, it supports the colour code. Um, the colour code is um, an underlying process of mindset. The OODA loop is kind of how you, how you put that into practice. So um, John Boyd, um, Tremendous life. He, he um, had influence in designing various aircraft, the F-15, F-16, the A-10 and so on. Um, and something I got from the books is that um, I was always of the opinion that the um, enemy of the United States Air Force was the Soviet Air Force. It turns out the enemy of the United States Air Force is the United States Navy because they're all competing for the budget. And... Um, even though Boyd was trying to design um, a really effective fighter aircraft, Pentagon experts kept loading other um, requirements onto it, turning it into things it wasn't. You know, the old thing about, um, you know, an elephant is um, a horse designed by a committee, that kind of thing. And it, it reminded me really of um, World War Two, when some of the German uh, aircraft designers came up with really, really good good designs, uh, far in advance of um, what the Allies had. But uh, some of the top Luftwaffe generals, and even more significantly Hitler, um, insisted on making them do things that they weren't suited for, delayed the production, which was you know, obviously a benefit to us. So if you're interested in aviation, it, it's good from that point of view. But... For, for uh, the study of um, combative mindset, Boyd's contribution is uh, pretty significant. And these books uh, really give you an insight into it all, particularly if you're an, an instructor. If you just want to know a little bit about the UDA loop, many, many of the books in our self-protection um, playlist will, will tell you what you need to know. But if you want to go in depth, these books will give you the picture.